we're going to wrap it up. Welcome to Bonus Issues. This is the digital extra for the issue is. Joining us, what a panel we've got here this week. Michael Reagan, who is the president of the Reagan Legacy Foundation, mm -hmm. Anna Kasparian from the Young Turks, which you can see on YouTube every day, and Perez Hilton from PerezHilton.com, one of the most successful celebrity sites ever, Thank a revolutionary you. in that space. Great to have all of you here. Mm -hmm. um, so let's, you all have media backgrounds. Let's talk for a moment about the media. The president uh, talking about the issue of fake news. He posted this on his Facebook page. I found this interesting. Watch. Listen up, everybody. I need you to hear this. Over the past year, we've watched as attacks have been leveled from every direction against President Trump. They want us to believe that there was collusion between the Trump campaign and Russia, when in reality, the only collusion was from the Democratic Party. Does that remind you of anything or maybe any other country? <laughs> that reminds me of a bad uh, video you see at Universal Studios, <laughs> um, but I find it hard to believe anything he or his associates say because they've repeatedly been called out for all of their lies. So I'd rather believe the media that sometimes gets it wrong than believe you who continually lies. Yeah, I think it's dangerous when you allow someone in such a high position of power to convince the American people that the media is not to be trusted. Remember, the media is supposed to serve as part of this system of checks and balances. We're supposed to hold those in authority uh, accountable for their actions, regardless of their political affiliation. Trump is very nice and complimentary to uh, other news organizations that are complimentary toward him. Anything else is considered fake news, and I think it's dangerous if you buy into that notion. It's politics. He plays to his base, and he knows his base eats this up. And there's been enough times that the news has been caught that he's able to use that for his base. And they're the ones that show up at all, all the times meetings. that he's caught, though. Right. And more lies than any other oh. president in, in history, according to the Washington Post. I mean, doesn't that seem like something out of North Korea? I don't put North Korea and play all those games with it. No. But it is Donald Trump. I think we should be used to him by now. Uh, we got him. He's the president of the United States. You know he's going to go off the page. Every single day, he's going to say the things he says. He's not going to be right on many of the things that he says. But again, that's Donald Trump. We cannot right. normalize the notion of state-sponsored media, which is essentially what he's doing. We cannot that have no that happen. That is, media. I mean, that was, he has this. He put out, he put out an ad. No, no, but he has this online show that uh, essentially spreads pro-Trump propaganda. And but, anything but, that criticizes him is considered fake news. He, he pawns it off as fake news. That is a very dangerous thing to do, whether you're a Democrat or Republican, by the way. there's all kinds of shows that go after him. Go to MSNBC. You think they talk positive about Trump on a regular basis? They don't. They, they don't. Him. What about CNN? But, but anything that goes against him is immediately cast off as fake news by those who have bought into but, him. It but, works but isn't for there a difference? Isn't there him. a difference between fake news, at, which is like Russian propaganda, which is made up stuff, and stories that are true but just are not necessarily helpful to your I think cause. The fake news, I think the fake news comes from the whole Russia issue. I think he really believes that's fake, and I believe it's fake also, knowing that Russia's been trying to be involved in our election since Even my father... Even though over a dozen people have already been um, indicted? But not uh -huh. on Russia collusion. They've been, mm -hmm. they've been indicted on everything else known to mankind, which is the problem with the special counsel mm -hmm. is people go to jail for things that have nothing to do with why they were put in place. They go to jail place. for being foreign agents, for um, laundering money, for doing all sorts of things and, that are unlawful. And, 2006. And the investigation isn't over yet, so we'll see what True. happens on that. Uh, oh, let's talk dinner. about what's happening here in the state for a moment. Um, you know, we had the, the governor's election. We had Gavin Newsom, Antonio Viragosa, both here on the show. Uh, throwing a lot of shade at each other here at the show. Millions of dollars in attack ads. And this week, they were campaigning together for the first time. So how does that work? I talked to Gavin Newsom about that. For people that aren't in the politics business, they see all you guys talking about each other back and forth, and then they see something like this, I and know. they're like, how does that work? You don't take anything personally in a campaign. You know, I was even joking with them at our breakfast before. I said, some of those shots were pretty good. I said, you know, I didn't take any of them personally. Perez, what do you make of that? Is, it, is that why people hate politics when they see stuff like that? No. I mean, I, I would say there was a similar parallel to when Bernie and Hillary are running. They played a fairly clean fight. 
Uh, they didn't get that dirty that I recall. Uh, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just buy anything Gavin Newsom is selling. He's so dreamy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's it. <laughs> You're in. Any other yeah. takes on that? I mean, okay. I, I just wanted to quickly jump in with that. I mean, there was a lot of dirty stuff going on um, between Hillary and Bernie, and most of it was one-sided, uh, especially with how the DNC manipulated the primaries. So I kind of disagree with you well, on that. Well, not from her directly, yeah. like in the debates. And I, I w Right. No, you're right about that. They didn't attack one another during yeah. the debates unfairly. So if that's the point you're making, I do agree with you. But I do also find it just weird and slimy that this is commonplace in politics, yeah. uh, regardless of party. Yeah. If it didn't work... It wouldn't be done. Okay. But negative advertising and those things have been working for years. Well, let's talk about something positive for a moment. Cristiano Ronaldo uh, is at top of the news because, of course, we're in the middle of the World Cup. And something you just told me, which I didn't know, he's oh, yeah. named after your dad. His father used to watch Ronald Reagan movies in Portugal when he was a child. And so when Cristiano was born, he named him Cristiano Ronaldo after Ronald Reagan. And he scored four goals so far in the World Cup. Hat trick and a header two days ago. He's so doing great. That's who you're rooting for. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, good reason, I guess. Uh, a couple of closing notes as well. We want to take a moment to honor the life of John Mack, who died this week at 81. Mack was a longtime president of the L.A. Urban League and the L.A. Police Commission. He helped unify this city through activism following a tumultuous time in terms of race relations. And Charles Krautheimer also passed away this week. He's one of the top conservative intellectuals and a longtime Fox News commentator Krautheimer, not only known for his brilliance, but also as a true gentleman. He was beloved by his colleagues. So our best to the families of Charles Krautheimer and John Mack. And our thanks to a terrific panel for sharing your views and doing so with respect and sort of in the, in, in the vein of what both those guys were about. We appreciate it. And uh, we hope you both, will, you all will come back and see us again. Absolutely. Thank you. That's it for the issue is. Have a great weekend, everybody. Thank you so much.